Good morning, this is Sharon from the House of Prayer. And I want to bring you the spirit realm. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 17, He is the image of the spiritual, of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven and that are earth. Visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. We do ourselves disservice by treating the spiritual world tritely. The spiritual or invisible world is absolutely important. We shouldn't cheat ourselves out of the benefits of the spiritual world because we are ignorant of it. Because we first became aware of the physical world, we give it primacy over the visible. This is not how we should live. And the Bible has a lot to say on that matter. If we read Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and 2 correctly, we would see that the visible realm is a byproduct of the invisible, so to speak. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. This makes even more obvious the fact that God is a spirit pre-existed in the beginning. He is the first cause of all causes. God is the preeminent author of all that we now see, but he dwelt in the unfathomable, timeless, and matterless reality called eternity. As we continue to read Genesis, we see an intertwining of the spiritual world and the world that proceeded from it. I know it may seem as if the two unrelated entities, but they are much more in integrated than we think. God intended for there to be no barriers between the visible and invisible when he created the seen world. Sin created a gap, and God sent Jesus to bridge that gap, not because he needed man, but because man would always need God. The intermingling of the spiritual world that is eternal and the physical world that is ephoral, which means lasting for a very short time, will continue even after this sin-riddled world has been destroyed. The Bible introduces a reality where our mortal bodies are clothed in the glory of God. The effects of this are we will put on immortality and the corruptible will be transformed into incorruptible. The mystery of this we do not yet fully understand, but God will reveal it all. With that said, as we live in the life, we are encouraged to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. In this world of afflictions and pain, we are encouraged by the apostle to keep our focus on the world that is preeminent, to this one that we live in. Turmoil seems to be the order of the day. If we focus on the catastrophes and hardships around us, we may lose our way. When we gaze at the invisible, we will not become weighed down by the vain and vexing trials. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2 states, Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
let us lay aside every weight and the sin which is so easily ensnares us and let us run with the endurance the race that is set before us looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith who for the joy that has set before us has endured the cross despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. None of us can say we have ever seen God physically, but we have seen the hand of God in our lives. But we can access him in the spiritual world by faith, and doing so we can influence the spiritual reality to afflict the physical world. Prayer is the main way we do this. Prayer has been slighted by so many of us because it seems less pragmatic than applying human efforts and understanding to the things we face in life. We must approach all situations through prayer. Our life is more than meets the eyes. Paul in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 18 through 20 points to the invisible realm as the call of our struggles. Prayer always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints and for me that utterly may be given to me and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I might speak boldly as I ought to speak. He knew that the best way to conquer the demonic forces that are working against us is to engage them through prayer. Some people are sick, broke, afflicted, dying or miserable because of demonic influences. Jesus came in the flesh and through the spirit. He was able to deliver these individuals when he encountered them. Remember, our world is intertwined with the spirit world. In Mark chapter 9 verses 14 through 29, we are told of a boy who was robbed of his speech. When the boy was brought to the disciples, their efforts to remedy the boy's situation were all unsuccessful. However, when Jesus turned up on the scene, he took control and said, You deaf and mute spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The disciples inquired about their failure and were told by Jesus so he said to them, This kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. You and I can draw on that spiritual power. It is said of Jesus in Colossians chapter 1, verses 16, that for by all things were created that are in heaven, and that are on earth invisible and visible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created through him and for him. He is the preeminent authority in the spiritual as he sits at the right hand of his Father. When we pray, we are inviting heaven to invade our circumstances. What battles are you fighting right now that are perplexing you? Do not allow it to get you down. Pray. Are you having difficulty in your relationship? And you see this as a family trend. Do not allow your relationship to suffer anymore. Pray and access the spiritual authority in Jesus Christ to remedy your relationship. Do you see a pattern, a maladaptive pattern, behavior and your life that is constantly recurring pray and ask god to enter your circumstances and help you to break the demonic cycle of addiction in your life 
Daniel prayed, and his answer was delayed. It took Michael, an angel stronger than the prince of Persia, was delaying Daniel's breakthrough to come and intervene. We read in Daniel chapter 10, verses 12 and 13, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard, and I come before because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me twenty-one days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I had been left alone there with the king of Persia. Jesus assures us that when we ask, we will receive. The Holy Spirit is mightier than all the angelic and spiritual beings combined. He is omnipotent, and when we pray, we can rest in the truth that he will deliver. My friends, do not treat the spiritual realm with sound regard. We are born of the Spirit, must be able to discern spiritual things, and in doing so, live above the defeats plaguing the visible world.